Hi everybody, Zid, Pete the Beast, welcome back. Um, well, I got this sucker working. Um, turns out the problem that I, or mistake I was making, was I was running a section of pipe up before I went into the high, so the bee princesses were going up and then bouncing out because they couldn't go, so a direct connection was the answer. Um, <coughs> pardon me. So since the last episode I've researched the entire acacia tree, got the bow bow bubble blow bow 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 thing. Um can't even pronounce the damn tree, but it's big. Got that one. Um also not a huge amount done over here, um but the Netherwalt farm is now working at full speed. Um so we got a good selection and obviously that's now so still working so yep I've taken a bit out of that for some potion stuff up in the wizard's tower which we're going to have a look at later what else anything oh yeah we had a minor disaster um, there with the blaze spawner um, oh gosh get down get down come on ah there we go okay so Basically, this thing here doesn't like having more than one item in its inventory slot. Um, so consequently, we can't go into there, grab a book, pipe books in and out, because it will crash the server Drop badly. Um, so we decided to try and get clever and come up with a way to circumvent that. So when a book left the system, it would send a red so signal and a book would enter the system. Failed big time, um, corrupted the server, corrupted this chunk completely, uh, and so I had to basically download the entire world to my uh, local PC, completely um, delete the chunk that this was in, re-upload it, and obviously then I've gone and rebuilt all of this, so yep, that was fun. Um, rule important lesson learned if the wiki says that doing something will crash the server the wiki is right and not to try and break it and get around that okay so yep they're all still with us and all these little friends so we've not had any um, despawning in there you know, little fella hello anyway big news most probably most important news is we have a new mod. Um, if so if I try and go for here, we should see, uh, hopefully, there we go, assembly table one, two, and three. We've installed the Traincraft mod. Um, a couple of the players wanted to build Zeppelins. I know Tusker's now got his Zeppelin and he's happily soaring around in that. Um, so I've decided that I'm going to build myself a train set track. When I was a kid, um, we had the old Hornby railways. And so I'm going to start building myself a train track out there. I've got a lovely expanse of uh, flat ground to play with. And so this is my engine shed. Um, I've basically done some googling around. Um, found a style I like, which is essentially very similar to this. Um, and we're going to build this engine shed. So I've been collecting supplies in this my little hidey hole so uh, we can build and come and sleep convenient for that. Lots of uh, red brick, lots of basalt bricks. Um, we're going to use crack sand to go under the rails. The, some of this wood I'm actually going to use for the um, coal bunkers and concrete for the floor. Uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, so most of today's episode is going to be building. Um, this is a mixture of full blocks here, then um, anti-covers is it, the third, basically two thirds, and then half slabs, and then furthermore little insets there. So that's my plan. These are all going to be, I don't know whether you can see here, but these are all micro blocks, so they will, they started off trying to do it with the double blocks like these um, and it was just a complete pain in the ass. so yep yeah, so we're going to do it that way 
So we're going to uh, break now and we're going to build this in uh, obviously time lapse mode. It's going to take a while, especially with all that um, micro blocks to do. So, yep, um, I'll catch you later once we've built this uh, train track, uh, engine shed. Okay. Okay, so having the basic design the first thing we set out to do on this is to build up the wall pillars that are solid blocks um, the two side sections going in at the same height and bridging those across and the uh, center section is taller um, so those go in And then the triangular peaks for the two roof sections. Now, most of these solid blocks will be torn out later, um, but these are just the guides for how tall the peaks are going to be and also for the micro blocks which make up the stepped sections. Repeat that on the uh, smaller shed sections. start building up the roof sections out of black basalt brick micro blocks. Now this is probably the longest process of the build. Um, the micro blocks give us a huge amount of flexibility, um, especially considering that the basalt bricks don't come in um, step sections. But they do take an awfully long time to place. The brick micro block sections for the raised skylights and vents then go in. And on these two small sections, these bricks will later come out um, to allow me to place the iron support girders. those are done we cap off the ends of both of these sections with stone micro blocks and then repeat the process on this kind of offset T section in the black roof sections again as you can see this is a particularly long and painstaking process but I think in the long run use of micro blocks like this is well worth it for something which is uh, essentially a very structural and aesthetic build a lot during this section as well um, which is where the long fall boots are uh, very valuable and when I'm building this the 
normal roof sections before the raised vents is off the top of my head I think it was seven blocks in so it was a lot easier to build that and then add in this roof section this raised vent skylighty affair build probably from start to finish was probably in total say around about five hours um, obviously we're recording here at about 15 seconds to a real second um, but not every bit of the recording was included um, but with this particular build this train depot and consequently the future stations and all the other bits and pieces I want to add to this train set I actually did want to make it visually pleasing as well as um, functional. Um, many Feed the Beast builds often tend to focus on the function and not the aesthetics. So with that roof all in, I decided then to build in the floor. Um, well, we haven't got the large roof in, so we can see what's going on. Um, currently laying cracked sand uh, from the wastelands. And that will be the uh, rail bed where the rails run on. And then concrete floor for the other sections. floor in place and then proceed to start building up the small wall sections um, for the already roofed areas. Now this is made up of full brick blocks, three quarter, sorry two thirds, uh, I think anti covers I think they may be called, um, half blocks and glass with some small corner blocks going in as well. Um, and this gives a very definite three-dimensional feel to the building um, and as you walk around it you can see the shadows and the three-dimensional elements going in so with that in place the next thing to do is to try and start working on the plans for this large peaked area um, tried using scaffolding as a means of going up there with mixed success shall we say the jetpack featured quite often and the very centre of that peak we built like a rose like flower petal structure um, with glass in the middle get that um, the pillars of the arches built in and then we once we've got that we would repeat that on the other side and at the back with one of them being a glass window as you can see at the back there and then we can move on to the large central roof section. Now needless to say we haven't got all of this being recorded as we probably have another 15 minutes of me placing black blocks so that will run through uh, and we get the peak section again the fence stroke skylight section in the roof going in eventually and, and underneath that we use this combination of eye end pillars to create a girder structure and a cage lamps for the lighting. We also put in some um, office space and building space off in one of the wings. So once that's all done, Once we've got the last bit of the roof section on, we 
finally end up with a finished article. We added a coal bunker at the front there, made up of uh, basalt cobbles and uh, cut into micro blocks. And as typical when you start recording it decides to start raining, but there you go. And that's the engine shed. Okay, well, it's another sunny morning. The build's finished. Made a few tweaks um, after I made that time lapse. So I just better go and deal with these uh, interlopers on my uh, porch. I think they're probably hiding under. We don't want any um, unfortunate creeper related incidents. Let's see where he is. Do -do -do. We. Ah, uh, there he is. In fact, we'll uh, we'll just pick him off that way. Uh, that's one down. Where's the other? He's about somewhere. Can't see him. Oh well, ignore him. He'll go away. Okay, so here we are. We've got the engine shed built. Hopefully, no mobs have crept in. Um, a coal pile here. Um, obviously, I can't use real coal, so I thought that uh, obsidian basalt cobble would be probably ideal. I've also made some switch tracks to improve on this bit and replace those brick columns with iron columns just to stay in theme. What else have we done in here? Oh, we made the uh, manager's office, so he's got his filing cabinets and bits and pieces in there and most of the building work will be taking place in here so next episode we'll get on to making some assembly tables and train workbenches and hopefully make our first uh, train probably also run um, a, a, just a circular track round just so we can uh, play with the train so yeah I've got really happy with the way this has turned out um, the three dimensional elements of the interior and exterior are just really nice. Well, I think so anyway. So, on to the last couple of things I wanted to do today. Um, one was to go and graft a whole load of these saplings. So, if you can see the bees have been absolutely well, busy as bees really, I suppose. So, what I'm expecting out of this is um, just no walnuts. Get me get my thing right. So at the moment, I'm probably an awful lot of cherries. That's uh, oh. I'm probably going to go through quite a lot of grafters. Walnut. That's one. I need four of those. However. Get a little bit of block like there. I don't think I'm going to have a any problem though. This with the amount of mutated saplings, that's two. That's probably got another use in it. So. I'm not sure whether you can... can you... Re oops. Yeah, that's uh, probably wasn't worthwhile doing. But I'm uh, guessing you can repair these the same as you can repair all the other stuffs. Come on. I've got three. One more. And it's raining lovely. Come on, one more. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go make more grafters. Four. Okay, so that gives us our sapling. Let's um, have this lot of trees down now. And I'll go and make some grafters just to get enough to uh, place some walnut. And hopefully, after we get walnut, 
we can work on our way to Chestnut. Oh, full. Uh, <laughs> only problem with saplings is they do fill up your inventory because any mutation makes them a separate inventory item. Not a problem. One thing I've been meaning to build actually is a little waste paper bin with a void pipe on it. Or trash can if you like. So maybe I'll uh, I'll do that as well. And we can just let that lock. Spawn. I'm going to have a whole load of cherries off of this, aren't I? Right, let's go build some grafters. Go get some bone meal. And we can uh, ditch off some of this. These saplings while we're at it somewhere. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll just stick a load in there for now. Not bothered about that. I do want that one. I'm going to need more silver. Silver lime saplings. And we'll go and grab some sticks and some bronze, I think I need. One, two, three. I'll make five. That should be enough. Right, where are we, Wood? Give me some sticks and stick that out of the way while I'm at it. Okay. So, bone meal, bone meal, that's in the Ty's chest. Alright. Nothing hanging outside my front door there. Good, good. Let's uh, just run down here and get myself a whole bunch of saplings. Is the underground is. Okay, this looks like as good a spot as any. Oh, there we go. Right, let's graft like crazy. Just so we've got enough to... Uh, what are we at? 13? Probably want about... 60, oh, that should be more than enough. Okay, let's have this back down. And then we can go and start planning world domination, no, um, tree domination. Oh, I don't know, something or other. Which is rain and go away. Let's have uh, that open. You see these bees, the range of them is just insane. Okay, let's just run around and pick up everything we can off the floor. That you can see anyway. Yeah, we've done pretty well for cherries, I would say. Damn well indeed. So sh just have these out. Now I'm not to get the uh, chestnut. We need to mix either cherries or silver lime and walnuts. So you could do both. But of course, if I do both, then the cherries and the silver limes will be mutating with each other as well. And consequently, I would end up also with walnut saplings, which is not what I want. So I'm going to do, I think, walnuts and silver lime. So ditch off some of that lot. 
Get rid of that. Stick down a so one, two, two, three, four. One there. One there. Because this seemed to work quite well with the balsa saplings where I was placing the bigger trees in the corner and then the smaller trees at either side. Now I've got to get the right there we go. It's always that corner one. Oh ah Okay, we'll get this done and we'll be back shortly. Okay, well it's night time. Um we got the trees sewn and unfortunately we can't get a snooze on the server because there's other people on and people are AFK, yada yada. So we're gonna fly over to the Wizards Tower and just have a little play in there. Um, now you do sometimes get some uninvited guests. These invisible blocks are great but mobs do walk through them it looks like we escaped there. So haven't done much in here since I built it. Um, oops, pie. Dizzy there. It's making you dizzy, it's making me dizzy too. Pardon me. We have built a little potion lab down here. I just took an infinite water source down there. Um, and we built a few bits and pieces, some potions, brought some supplies over, bottles and such. On the top flo middle floor, nothing's happening. On the top floor, I've just set up my miscraft stuff where I've got my various pages. Haven't really done anything with this yet. Um, something I do want to get into later. Okay, so there are several things that I wanted to play with in here, but let me just bring up and oh, wonderful. Are you going to Play silly sods, you are. Okay, well the potions that you can make, I mean obviously these are standard vanilla potions, so if I look in the potion shelf we've got strength, and these are okay. But if we start playing with, um, get some more empty vials, get those, I want some gold nuggets and TNT for the time being. For example, we can create these glowing water, which if I hit on that, that's just a condensed splash serum with glowstone, and that is just netherwork gunpowder and glowstone to make those. So, we can, now let me get this the right way around, I think it may be like that, but if it's not, it'll be, the other. it is the other way, as is always the case. build these things, holy hand grenades. These are f pretty powerful, let me just go and add them to the stack on this. Oop. Didn't mean to pick those and do that, but... Now holy hand grenades will just decimate mobs, they're absolutely brilliant. Um, four or five of those is enough to kill most bosses. We'll give you an idea of how powerful they are. The other thing you probably noticed, if you hover over them, it it basically says it doesn't damage mobs, it kills mobs, it doesn't damage blocks, and it doesn't damage the thrower. So, unlike TNT, which would damage everybody, it won't damage me, and it won't damage the blocks. So they're holy hand grenades, uh, and I'm probably planning to have quite a few of those. Now, if I just... Why have I got that going on? Just go and fill these up with water. Okay. Now these things stack. So if I were to let me just go and get my ingredients, get rid of those and that. Uh glowstone, netherwort and redstone. So if I were to stick those in don't know whether it actually matters the order, but we'll uh We'll get a condensed solvent. And from condensed solvents, we can then, this is equivalent of a mundane potion in uh, 
vanilla Minecraft. So then we can do, I think, a glistening melon, I think, for a healing one. Uh, there's something else I'm missing. I'm just going to uh, quickly relog just to see if I can get my not enough items up and running, and uh, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, had a <laughs> minor thing there. Logged out, logged out to get any eye working again. Um, and the Minecraft login servers went down, but plus side, it's now daytime. Anyway, so the elixir, elixirs, there's all sorts of elixirs. You've got the speed, digging, strength, healing, bounding, regen, resistance, uh, water breathing, invisibility, seeing in the dark. There's also um, some other beasties. I'm just trying to think if I go, uh, let's have a look at that. And then if I look at the uses of Elixir of Healing, that should show me these ones, which are Grand Panacea, for example, which is a 30 second regen and heals six hearts. And that's made out of a mixture of those potions and a bucket of milk. Um, so, if I want to make a lecture of healing, it's glistening melon oh, and glowstone dust. So, I need some glowstone dust. And we can go and whack those in. And bang, six potions of healing. Stackable. Um, now, apparently, these are a lot faster to use as well. Um, not being damaged, I can't test that, so what we'll do is we'll stick those on there and we'll do something else, shall we do speed which is sugar, I haven't got any sugar, maybe not speed then healing, bounding, let's have a look feather, glowstone, dust and redstone uh, if you can hear that slight grumbling in the background, that is the dog <laughs> There she goes again. She'll probably start barking at something in a minute and come hurling through the room. Um, such is life. Right, so we'll pop back and get some feathers. And then we'll go and have a try this elixir of bounding. Um, I don't think I want any sugar. We could, could try it. Let's have a look in food chest. Nothing in there. Feathers will be in mob drops. Oh, I ain't got many. I need to kill more chickens. And have I got anything in other? I've got enough uh, to make a little bit of sugar. There we go. Right. We'll just quickly head back over there and um, make up these and and test test these out. Okay, up we go, up we go, up we go, up we go, round and round. What's up with bees and trees? What's what's Kazi having problems with there? Okay, right. So if I want to make the speed, that was sugar, glowstone, and redstone. Uh, need some redstone. So, two of those, two of those, two of those, and two of those. Gives me a little of speed, and the bounding was feather, glowstone, and redstone. I'll just make a couple. Um, da -da. And oh, all right. I'll make eight. All right. So, with those in my inventory, let's. Is it night time already? God, did it take me that long to get logged back in again? Oh well. No loss. Turn the jetpack off. Uh, and we'll go 
and find an open space to play with those. These, even. In fact, I'll turn it back on again so I can get to the open space. Eee. Not sure whether I'd have much use for bounding potions and speed potions, but because um, my boots have already got haste on. Okay, what's that one? Bounding. Oh, that seemed to... It gives you a fair jump. Let's uh, just... Use one of those. Whoa. Now we're speedy. Ha, <laughs> you can't even catch up with me, can you, skeleton? No. Oh, how you did. So yeah, the uh, that's elixirs as opposed to standard potions. Anybody chasing me? No, I'm all right at the moment. Okay, jet back back on. Let's turn off my nano saber and just get some less safe. Should have brought a holy hand grenade with me, shouldn't I? We could have really had some fun. Okay. So yep, and they're in there. They've got. Pretty good durations on them as well compared to normal potions, which is worth knowing. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Next episode, I'm going to transfer a whole load of building materials down to uh, the engine shed. Oh uh, god, I'm shifting with some speed, aren't I? Got a whole load of tracks to use. Um, plenty of creosote so we can start making our own wooden ties um, need to make some track sections um, and we'll start making some trains check on the trees possibly have a play with some of the other Zeno's reliquy stuff oh this is this is great <laughs> this is so fast I mean I'm already hasted with my boots and now I'm hasted with the potion So, yeah. Oh, and the other thing we're going to do is I've started, and I say started, is it in there? No, it's not. It's in here with all these trees. Started putting together the elements we need to build a blast furnace, so we'll get that finished off um, and done. And I'm possibly going to play with some mine factory reloader stuff in the next couple of episodes. I want to play with cow breeding using some of the breeding machines. So. Yeah, anyway, I've been Sid, um, this has been Feed the Beast, and uh, see you next time. Bye.